Hey boys and girls, welcome back. I got a pretty versatile pattern here. Uh, something I'm filling the box here with. This is what's called a gray ghost. Um, extremely long, extremely fluffy, extremely fuzzy type mayfly pattern. Um, depending on the color, it can pretty much imitate anything. I, I, I use them a lot for green drakes or when some of the bigger stoneflies, uh, not stoneflies, mayflies are coming out because uh, they can be a little bit bulky, especially when you start, you know, adding uh, different collars and different CDC and things like that. This one I used like a rabbit hair uh, dubbing here on the thorax, a little bit different one on the body. It's got a, a rib on it, either wire or tinsel. I'm gonna do tinsel on the one here that I'm tying for you today. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, when it gets in the water, depending on the shade of the gray, it can get uh, very dark and, uh, or if you tie it lighter, uh, can kind of imitate, um, you know, some of those uh, blue wings that are coming off that's big, but, uh, you know, mostly early to midsummer. I'm gonna use something like this and the colors kind of, or what can change. So what we're looking at, uh, what we have here today, uh, I'm gonna talk to you about some of these pheasant tails. Uh, that's all this is here, easily twice the length of the body. Uh, we have CDC collar in the front, silver bead, and you can't see it too much here because I brushed this one out really good. Um, but uh, this one has like a wire wrap in it. The tinsel looks a little bit more yeah, it gives a little bit more pop, you know, than this one does. Uh, you can't really see it too much, but when it gets dark or when it gets wet, you know, and that little bit of darkness shows up, you can see that a little bit better in the water. So as far as our ingredients, uh, the hook we got, this is a jig hook, Orvis 1P2A size 14, uh, just a three millimeter silver bead. The tinsel that we're using is Vivas Holo Tinsel Blue. And Semperfly, this is their gray banana silk. Uh, we're also going to be using some mono here to help protect uh, that tinsel a little bit as an extra rib. For the CDC, I uh, actually just went and picked these up yesterday and uh, the Orvis shop, I guess Orvis is getting out of the fly tying business and uh, they're switching, at least our local shop here, is switching everything over to fulling mill. And I got these CDC feathers, okay? They're kind of like a bluish gray and uh, yeah, it's just amazing how nice these feathers are. I was... I was blown away by it. I'll show you here. This is one feather. I mean, you can't even see through them. You know, they're so dense. And some of the fibers on them are, you know, crazy long. So, uh, really good product here. And uh, this is like a one gram package for like 10 bucks. And, That'll probably last me a lifetime. Uh, for the thorax, what we're using is prism. This is pr prism black, has a little bit of blue in it and another fulling mill product. This is, yeah, the fancy name is uh, Euronymph Flash Dub. This is dark hairs here. Just has a little bit of blue in it. And uh, that's pretty much it, it's a very simple tie. Let's get right to it here, guys. I'm using this pattern, you know, as something that, uh, you know, we're kind of working on here, or have been working on the past couple weeks, such as soft tackles. And this is just another CDC pattern, you know, that, you, that uh, I typically use. I'll tie these in green uh, for when the drakes come off, and that works really well. But, uh, you know, one of the other important things is, you know, just trying to match your colors. I, uh, 
I dye a lot of products. Mostly threads, not threads, yarns, feathers, CDC. But uh, you can really make an impact. And it's not hard if you hunt your own birds, um, you know, and you get pheasants or quail or grouse or, you know, anything along that line. You know, you can really take advantage of some of that. That, that type of feather can be very expensive. And, um, you know, especially when you want to try different colors or match this. Uh, I wanted to show you some of the things that we're working on here. Uh, my son lives out uh, in Minnesota and he gets to hunt a lot of birds, both duck and, uh, you know, different game birds, pheasants, quail, things like that. Here is a natural colored on a pheasant tail, okay? What we're using today, um, this one is dyed deep shale. So it's like a dark gray. You can't really see it too much in the middle of the feather here. We're typically not using that so much as far as color. But when you look at the edges of it, you can definitely see the difference. And uh, yeah, it just kind of makes your bugs more Instagram ready. You want to try it that way. Another one that was close that I tried uh, was this one. This one is called Black Plum Pie. It's more of a bluish type shade, but it's noticeable. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to get into that, it's super easy to do. And uh, you can make your colors whatever you want. It's, uh, it's perfect. Just throw a couple teaspoons of that uh, of that dye into, you know, like a solo cup or something like that. And, uh, you know, you can, it only takes a couple minutes. It takes longer to dry them than it does anything else. But like I said earlier, you want these feathers to be at least twice as long. I'm trying to grab a hold of that so that I can put it where. stuck in the group <laughs> my advice yeah. really struggling with this here All right, so our tinsel. Actually, we're gonna put our mono on first. If I can find it. these up in black a lot because it can represent just about anything in the water don't really have to 
taper the body or anything like that. I would just do it with, you know, the dubbing that uh, you're gonna use. Okay, take a healthy pinch of this. like it to be too thick on the body but we do need to have it wrapped on there loose enough that uh, the tinsel can compress that uh, that dubbing a little bit. And the model will help with that too. Just to give it a little bit better segmentation on it. can see how it's a little bit dark there. Just a consistent body up through that. of this like I said it's just to show a little bit of flash I'm going to follow the ribbing with this mono. Place it right over top of the blue tinsel just to protect it a little bit. Doesn't change the color or affect it at all. Okay, so normally I try just try to push back some of these guard hairs that are on here. Before I tie in the rest of this. Okay. A little bit of this ice stub. I like it because it's just a little bit darker, you know, than this uh, other dubbing. Just to give it a little bit of contrast.
still fuzzy. All right, then we're gonna get uh, our CDC. You can get that in there however you want. I always use split thread. See how nice and fluffy these things are? So pull them back. You can see that was just half a feather. Separate this bead a little bit. Hey guys, there you go. Great ghost. I'm not a big fan of the tinsel. I prefer the wire a little bit because this kind of can be a little bit too much. The size I have is a medium, so it's really taken up a lot of the bug. But yeah, when you get this thing in the water, all that CDC in there just flows around. Really looks, really looks good with that kind of movement. So. Tie some up, change your colors, make it how you like it, make it what looks like in your stream, go from there. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you.